kind of let the ball bounce a little bit to, you know, let everybody get to their spots. And I looked up and two guys ran to Giannis. And when they ran to Giannis, Brooke was already, like, as soon as I looked up, he was already running towards me. And I knew that that was what the play was going to get to eventually anyway. So um, I advanced it to him and just took off running. And, um, you know, Fox was kind of trailing the play. And he kind of got back in front of me because I slowed down. I knew I, was, I wasn't going inside the three-point line. So he kind of got back in front of me. And I just changed direction and went into space, you know. And that's all I was looking for is just get into space where I can get a, a good look at the rim. And I did. And... Um, you know, it was a pretty comfortable shot. When it's not what you're expecting initially and you just get the ball 94 feet away with five seconds left, kind of what's the thought process as you're surveying the floor? Uh, like I just said, I'm, I'm just looking for space. You know, I think um, in my experience, every time I'm in that type of situation, I just uh, try to avoid being in a crowd, you know, where it can be deflections or, um, you know, two defenders can put me in a position where I can't get a shot off at all. Uh, so once I came up the slot and, you know, Brooke was kind of right there, I went in front of Brooke, but I went that way just to go into space to where even if, uh, I think it was a bonus, even if he tried to come towards me, I still would have been able to use the rest of that other three quarters of the court. Um, but I, you know, I'm just looking for some space and I found that space. Uh, do your eyes go to the clock at all? Do you, do, do you take a peek or is it, you know, it's five and uh, I know well, when I knew, to get it? I think I looked, I looked up at one point and it was four seconds. So I knew I had time to get it over half and like, you know, make my move to get to that space and get a, a clean shot up without having to rush it. Um, but as soon as I threw it in, I took a peek. You know, I looked at the clock and I was like, I knew I had time. Uh, how much does a win like this mean? How much what? How much does a win like this mean to you guys going forward? Well, it means a lot because, you know, we're on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, we had our opportunities to extend the lead, but they're a really good team. You know, they can fill it up. They play fast. Um, they give themselves a chance in every game. Um, so these are, these are the kind of games where um, you don't want to let them slip. You know, it's a home game, uh, a quality win against a good team, second night of a back-to-back, -back, and we, you know, was pretty much in the driver's seat the whole game. So... Um, these are the ones you got to have. You know, you get to March and uh, in April and you look back and these are the games you're like, man, we let that one slip. We let this one slip. So this was a great one to have. How much does your confidence shooting from deep uh, help you in these situations? Uh, I would say a lot just because it's um, I'm never looking for a specific range to get into to feel good about the shot that I take. You know, it's like as soon as I get to space, usually I'm like, I can make it. So um I think my belief in that, it helps me a lot in those situations because a lot of times you're not going to get to toe the line or, you know, get to a, a spot where, you know, you can get a clean look up close like that. How did it feel to see your teammates doing your celebration at the end? But not only that, just knowing how much faith they have in you. Uh, I mean, anytime your, your group feels good about what you do at the end of a game, it feels great. Um, but they've been telling me, I've had a few moments, not any game winners, but I've had some big shots, you know, at the end of some games. And they're like, man, you didn't even tap your wrist. <laughs> and I kept telling them, like, man, it's, if you look over the course of my career, I didn't just every game just tapping my wrist. I was like, it's, I do it when it's necessary. And tonight it was necessary. <laughs> Did Yana say anything to you? Um, yeah, dude, like a bear hug. He just, yeah, he, um. <laughs> I, when I saw the clip of it, he was tapping his, he started tapping his wrist when he was running towards me and then he almost choked me out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, after the game, he was just like, you know, that was a, I never seen a tough shot like that, you know, running full speed and you kind of sidestep, fading from deep, you know, like that. And I was just like, it, for me, I, I train and I work on these types of things, you know, so when I do it, it doesn't feel as difficult as it looks. And then when I see it, I'm like, that it does look, really difficult but I mean I I've got a lot of reps at uh, shots like that so when it, it looks a certain way to the person that's watching it doesn't feel that way for me that's why because Eric asked you about the sequence but like when did you actually have a chance to look at the rim look like like you almost let the shot go without even looking at the basket because you were looking at the court and defenders and the time and the screen and no, my eyes went up first you know any whenever um, when I'm training my trainer um, Phil Beckner is always telling me, get your eyes up, you know. So I, it's a habit for me off the dribble. I always, my eyes are up almost before I'm even gathering the ball. So um, I got that space and I just, my eyes was on the rim. Uh, 
You guys go down six to, to start overtime. Um, just kind of what gave you guys the faith to, to come through? Because as you said, it's a back-to-back. -back. You could be like, All right, yeah. whatever, let's wrap it up. I mean, it's, it happened. It was quick. You know, they jumped out uh, to that league quick. So it was, I think what we had on our side was time. You know, I think it was like 2.45 or something at that point. It was close to three minutes left. So it wasn't like we had to come down and rush. And I think because of, you know, us having an understanding of that, we just, we were patient. I think uh, when we were down six, um, Griff called a timeout and we just executed. Uh, I remember we ran a play, I handed it off. They went to sleep for a second and I kind of just quickly looped over the top of two screens and they went to sleep. I head faked and I got a clean look and I made that three. And, you know, once you cut it to a one possession game, you definitely get out of that, all right, you know, we, that almost panic mode. So cut it to three. And I think we just settled in right there. And, um, you know, we just kind of walked it down slowly, literally to the buzzer. Brooke also had a big shot in overtime. What's it like to see a seven footer like him running down the court and then banking that corner three? I mean, every when he shoot, I always feel like it's going in. You know, that's one thing I say about Brooke. Um, you know, I've seen him make some awkward ones, some where it's like he fading backwards off one leg or hesitate and then he shoot it or from deep or, you know, extremely contested. Uh, but I, I think that was really the biggest shot of the night, you know, because without that one, uh, it was a four point game at that point. Without that one, he cut it to one and he put them in position where they had to make free throws and it opened up the opportunity for me. So um, it's all, that's like kind of like the, I don't know, uh, hockey assist or like, or whatever. It's that type of type of situation. You know what I mean? He without that, I don't have the opportunity to make my shot. So I think that was really, you know, obviously my shot was the game winner. Bless you, John.